Sterling silver, coin silver, silver plate, sterling weighted. What does this all mean? What are all these cups on this, on this tray? Which one do you think is worth the most? We'll answer these questions and more in this week's question. My name is Jay Sivosky. I'm the owner and auctioneer here at the KC Auction Company in Kansas City, Missouri. Drop my glasses. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Thank you all for tuning in. If you're watching, hey, Don, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're watching, please uh, like, the, like the video, share it with your friends, let people know what it is, and I will uh, share this on my page real quick and get rolling with it. Outstanding. So we're going to talk about silver plate, sterling silver, weighted sterling, and uh, coin silver today and kind of give a brief rundown of what those things are and what makes one piece worth more or less than another and why and what are the some of the telltale factors that you can look for when you're going through your you know, family members of the state collection out there shopping in an auction estate sale thrift store wherever you might be these pieces are out there they're available to be purchased any day in the country uh, and the more you know, the, the more profitable you'll be in business or the better your collection will be personally because there are a lot of things that are hard to discern if you don't have the knowledge. So I showed this tray of cups and so on and so forth. And uh, Mike Woodfield, a uh, colleague of mine in Colorado, said, you should really talk about weighted silver compared to sterling silver. We get that question a lot. We get a lot of confusion about that. And so let me go ahead and start with that right here, this piece up front. It uh, looks pretty decorative. It looks really interesting. Uh, it is sterling silver. I'll try and get the mark shown right here. Uh, it's not going to focus in on that. But this actually says, and I'll read it so you know exactly what this says and what other pieces like it would say. It says Fisher, which is the company who made it, sterling, weighted, and then there's an ID number, like a 769 or 765. And that's just the form number of this. So this is actually sterling silver with a weighted base. So this piece right down here is covered in sterling, but the interior is either in concrete or sand or plaster or something to give it stability, give it some heft, give it some, you can use it for the creamer that it's supposed to be. You can fill it with liquid, pour it on your, in your coffee or your tea, and, and it will be fine. It'll be perfect for that aspect and that application. It's sterling silver. It's a sterling coffee cup or a sterling creamer. It's kind of worth some money, right? I mean, I weighed it out just for this. It weighs 2.8 troy ounces. It's almost three ounces of silver, right? Uh, and silver today on uh, February 16th. Happy birthday, honey. Stacy, it's her birthday today. Is $16.72 an ounce for spot price. Sterling is 92.5% pure. So that makes the silver worth $15.46 a troy ounce. So this is worth $45, right? just in the silver. Unfortunately, in a weighted piece, that is not correct because the majority of the weight is the interior. It's the concrete, it's the plaster, it's the sand, it's the plastic in newer pieces, whatever is inside there to give it that strength and that stability to be able to sit on a table and use and pick up and sit back down with weight. In it. The vast majority of that weight is non-valuable. There's no, um, there's no value, there's no intrinsic value to the weighted portion of the creamer. And because of that, uh, the silver value in this, there is still some silver value here, is probably going to be closer to an ounce or so. This is really thin. What they put over the weighted portion is super thin. It doesn't have to have any structural integrity to it. It just has to be pretty. Um, and the, the top, you can hear it's pretty hollow sound. There's not a lot of depth to it. There's not a lot of you know, weight to it. So there's probably an ounce of silver here. And so a creamer like this is really worth in the range of $10, $12, $15. Uh, plus you've got to take the time and the expense of removing the base, getting rid of the byproduct. And, and so you have some time invested in there. And, and so the value of this by itself is not very, there's not a lot of value. It's worth honestly, you know, by itself in an antique shop, 10 or 15 dollars and somebody will buy it and use it at that price because it's just a, it's a pretty piece if you like a traditional table setting that's something you want to use let's go to something else let's go to the what's probably the, the heaviest piece on the table this beautiful victorian era coffee can very solid right you can hear that it's really heavy i'll bring a big ding to it has what looked like really good hallmarks on it look at that it's impressed hallmarks uh it's very easy to get confused by that uh, I don't know if you can read those or not, but basically all that flash and all that glitz 
It's a fancy E, a fancy P, a fancy N, and a fancy S, which means electroplated nickel silver. Uh, it's silver, a fancy terminology for silver plate. And then there's a maker's mark behind it, that uh, crest mark to the right over here. That's a maker's mark, almost irrelevant. There's not much value to it. This way, 6.2 ounces. So if you were to walk through an estate, saw the hallmarks and thought it was sterling, you would think there's a lot of silver there at six ounces. There's going to be a ninety dollars worth of silver in that. The reality is, it's a you know it's late Victorian area. It's probably actually been replated. It's very clean and very. The decoration is not as crisp, and so it doesn't have. Uh, my guess is it has been replated sometime in the eighties or nineties. That was very common and very popular to do uh, at that point, and it doesn't really affect the value one way or the other. Um, it doesn't negate the value. It doesn't add a lot of value either. Uh, this piece, if you were to see this at an antique shop in a state sale, you're probably looking at a five to twenty dollar thing, probably ten to twenty dollars. It's a nice Victorian piece, good decoration on it. It has not been monogrammed, which does help value. It's got the cartouche on both sides. It has not been monogrammed. You could easily add a monogram to that and give it as a gift or an award or a presentation piece today, and we see that a lot. Uh, when I had a, when I had my shop, I saw a lot of people look for old silver pieces, both plated and sterling, uh, that was not monogrammed, and they could put, you know, uh, you know, a thank you or a an important date on there and give it as a gift today. It's an antique piece with a modern engraving, and the value is so kind of nominal on it. Even at the highest retail is twenty five or thirty dollars. That's cheaper than buying something new that uh, wouldn't have the same character, even though that's been replated. So let's go to something else. Let's look at, all right, let's go to this one. It's pretty easy. I mean, this is a pretty stout, heavy piece. I mean, you can tell it has a lot of, you know, it has good weight to it, fancy handle, but there's some really crazy marks in the bottom. And this is the oldest piece I want to show you today. And you can see all these pieces are on our current auction. If you go to our website, kcauctioncompany.com, you can see all these pieces and a lot of pictures and detailed photographs of all the hallmarks and more information. This piece here, let me just read my, it's uh, made in 1745 by Gurney and Cook in England. And this combination of marks illustrates that. Let me see if I can. So the most important mark to look for is the Lion Passant, which is right there. That Lion Passant is what it's called, is an indication that this is 92.5% pure silver. It doesn't say sterling on it. It has not, doesn't have any numbers on there telling it's 92% pure. It has a lion passant, and that marking correlates to a silver standard. Other marks on here, we have a leopard head. We also have this letter K right there. That is the date letter. In, in England, in the UK, they, and this is still in effect today, at least starting in the 16th century, um, they started using... Uh, assaying marks, it was you legally, if you produced silver of any sort or gold, you had to register for and receive an assay mark from the government, stating that you, and that way you were legally selling, which you're representing what you were selling legally. Uh, and buyers were comfortable and confident in that you were selling an actual piece of sterling silver. That's what that lion facade means. The date letter tells you when it was issued. Uh, and if you look online, there's many good websites that have information about um, English hallmarks and the date system. They have them all online. You can tell they change the style of the cartouche every to every 27 years because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. They used all 26 letters. Uh, they would go uppercase, generally go uppercase and lowercase in the cartouche, then change the cartouche and the font and do it again. So every 52, 53 years, you have a different, completely different setup. Uh, there's also a city mark, and then the mark in the center on this is uh, the maker's mark, uh, that Gurney and Cook. So this is 1745. This way, is, and this is the heaviest. This is even heavier than the silver plated piece. So a lot of people would pick this up and think that it's plated simply because of the heft. It's almost eight troy ounces, eight ounces of silver in this um, to make this cup. So just in the silver value, you know, $15 or so an ounce times eight, that's $120 just in the silver value of this cup, which doesn't look that much different than this cup that's worth $15 or $20. So you can, you can see how important it is to know what those marks are. The difference in value is drastic. It's 10 times the value on this one than this one. 
just in the that in, in the silver weight alone is worth 10 times more than what this cup is retail this cup here is probably worth retail in the four or five hundred dollar range because it's from 1745 it's 18th century that's a good early piece of silver that a lot of collectors and dealers are coveting in our auction and if you have pieces like that this has a crest engraved on the front you could probably do some research and find out what that crest represents uh, but it doesn't generally tell you a lot of value something else to keep in mind when you're looking at this is a really fancy looking piece right here let's and this is sterling i'll jump right to the trick but there are no marks on the bottom okay so how do i know it's sterling how do my buyers know it's sterling well hallmarks can be placed anywhere on a piece and i grabbed this one in particular because it's got a lot of fancy you know engraving work but the hallmarks are basically hidden in and amongst the decoration and hopefully it'll focus in on that i don't know if i can do that somehow or another uh there you can kind of see the cartouches in the middle of the floral engraving those are the hallmarks and this cup here was made in 1827 by Adam Bellamy Savory. Again, it's an English piece. You saw the hallmarks go online. You can find all kinds of resources on English hallmarks. So we know this is made in 1827 by Adam Bellamy Savory, and it is, again, sterling silver, and it weighs like four ounces, so there's $60 in silver here. Again, it doesn't look nearly as impressive as this one, really. Uh, this is more stout. This has a lot more presence. This is really delicate looking. It has nice handwork in it, but you can see the value is four or five times just in the silver value of this compared to this value here because it's plated again. <clears throat> Finally, I want to show you a piece of coin silver. So this is just a really simple little mint julep cup is what they're most often, often referred to. Completely plain, as nice, except for the beaded uh, rims on the top and bottom. Little dent right there. And this one just says, and this was actually pretty well marked. Jacquard and Co. St. Louis coin on the bottom. And you can even see little dimples in the silver. And you can see that really clearly in this cup right here. Um, when you start to look at a lot of old silver, all that waviness in the silver, well, that's actually from the hand planishing. That's from the hammering of the piece by the silversmith back in the day. This mark was used 1837 to 1848 at St. Louis. So it's a Missouri coin silver piece. Uh, coin silver is generally regarded as 90% pure. Coins are 90% pure. That's what they've been uh, in, in from, for American coinage. And coin silver was made by a silversmith. You would bring the silversmith, let's say, for a cup like this, you probably would bring, well, it's three and a half troy ounces. So if you had silver dollars, which were an ounce, you probably took him four silver dollars and he took and planished them down, made them into a sheet metal, uh, and took a half a coin, kept that for himself, and put the other three and a half ounces in here. And his, his half a dollar, his 50 cents, is what he made this cup for uh, in exchange for the cup, is oftentimes how it worked. Um, they could buy silver and do it that way. So there's a trade, and there's also an outright purchase available. Um, again, three and a half ounces of, sil of sterling silver. Um, you know, so it's 90% pure, three times that. That makes... So the difference in the, in the coin silver piece and a sterling silver piece right now is about 40 cents an ounce just in the silver value. This is worth about $15.05 an ounce. This is worth $15.45 an ounce. So you can see just that little difference on a larger grouping can make a big difference. You have 10, ounce, 10 pieces that are half an ounce, you know, 10 ounces of coin, 10 ounces of, of sterling. You're talking about $5 in difference. That doesn't sound like a lot, but silver is oftentimes traded as a commodity. And five dollars and oftentimes is a profit or not profit for a day on silver buyers. So this is three and a half ounces of coin silver worth in the range of forty-five, fifty-two dollars or so, just in the silver. Um, I expect this cup to bring between two and three hundred dollars because it has regional interest. It's going to appeal to Missouri collectors, Missouri silver collectors, St. Louis collectors, St. Louis silver collectors, and then uh, just coin silver collectors in general. If you have questions, comments, please, uh, I kind of got along with this conversation. I love silver. You can kind of tell it's one of our things we do a lot around here. Uh, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Ask questions here if you're watching. Uh, you can always ask a question at any time, either, either here on the video page. Uh, you can send us a private message. You can email us at info at kcauctioncompany.com. Give us a call at 816-283-3633. 
But just a recap, if you have any questions, please let me know. Even though this looks very much like the rest of them, it's the least valuable piece on the table. It's silver plate. You really have to learn the hallmarks. Uh, and once you start looking at them closely, you can see those kinds of things. Worth far more than their melt value. Absolutely, Don. And, and most silver at this price point is worth more than the silver value today. Um, these are good antique pieces. Pieces from the 50s and 60s, it's borderline. Uh, but we're absolutely, I, I showed some pretty nice pieces today, and I was kind of deliberate in that. Uh, it's, we're, we're fortunate that we have these items in our mark auction right now consigned to us from a collection uh, from Kansas. But, um, yeah, silver can be worth a lot more than silver value. This piece is really just worth the silver in it um, unless somebody wants to use it. There's not much more value than the silver there. Like I said, about $15, and I figure there's going to be about an ounce of silver in that once you get rolling with it. And you bring anything else up that has just the silver value. Um, but that's, a, there's a, we kind of look at things on a piece by piece basis. And we, we like to give buyers the opportunity to make that decision for themselves. We can, we know the refinery in town, we can take it all there and have it scrapped out if that's all it's really worth. But we like to give our buyers the opportunity to say, no, we, I really like that. I want to buy that for myself personally. Even if they're paying the silver value, it stays out of the, it doesn't become a coin, it doesn't become a, an ingot next week, it becomes a part of an estate and an heirloom, it becomes a part of a collection. Um, learn and research and figure out the English hallmarks. It makes it can make a huge difference in value for your pieces, of, even if it's a collection of your own or if you're looking to add to your collection. Knowing the differences and what those hallmarks are and learning which the which hallmarks look like sterling hallmarks and which ones are can make you a lot of money and make your collection worth a lot more. Otherwise, it's a little afternoon here in Kansas City. It's, again, chilly today. It's going to be warm over the weekend if you're in Kansas City. Uh, we had 65 to 70 degrees yesterday on, uh, in February, which is kind of unusual. Today it's much cooler, but this weekend's supposed to be in the 50s and 60s, so it's going to be kind of fun. Anyway, uh, thank you for all watching, and have a great afternoon. And if you have any questions, please let us know.